Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm doing another movie video first because obviously movie videos are the ones that I like doing the most, but I will plan on making some of those other videos in the future. Anyway, this video I wanted to make, um, it's about a specific topic in movies. Um, it's kind of just a discussion video almost rather than like a video or movie review or like a ranking or something. As you can see, uh, today I'm holding my microphone because last time I recorded in here, um, because as you can clearly see, um, my walls are like freshly painted basically. And I still have, uh, just one sec, I got my right down there. I got a playtime poster there. But yeah, I got some posters still on the ground that I need to get frames for so I can hang up on the wall. And I need to get some other stuff so that my room isn't echoey. If you watched my last video, I had my mic just on my arm and I just cranked the gain so that it would still pick it up. And it was very echoey, so I didn't want that again. I'm just holding my microphone, at least for now. So it still sounds half decent. But anyway, that's besides the point. Today, my video topic that I wanted to talk about was Terrence Malick, specifically his older films versus his newer films, specifically the 2010s ones that I have seen. Um, I've seen not all of his films, so am I jumping the gun here a little bit? Yeah, probably. Um, I probably should wait to make this video until I finish his filmography. But if I take a look at my ranking real quick on Letterboxd for Terrence Malick, as you can see, I will put it on screen. I've seen three of his films that are from the 2010s and two that are not from the 2010s. And all three of my top three are the 2010s ones versus the ones, so I'll show it here. It's uh, Days of Heaven and Badlands are the last, like my two least favorites of his. I still like them, but the other films uh, that I've seen from him are my personal preference. And so I'm going to be explaining why I think 2010's Terrence Malick is better than pre-2010's Terrence Malick. Because even though I haven't seen all of his movies, I've seen the majority of at least the really popular ones and the only other one that i'm uh that from each that i think thin red line i could potentially really love and then uh, a hidden life i could potentially really love and if i do end up loving both of those i'll still think that 2010's terence malick is better so yeah with that being said uh let's just kind of get right into it i'm sort of winging this but i know generally what i'm going to be talking about all right so first up being uh sort of the main difference that a lot of people see in uh the pre-2010s malik era and the 2010s malik era is the visual style specifically um i know that he did have very good visuals still before the 2010s I'm thinking here specifically Days of Heaven. That film looks incredible. I love the sort of usage of nature and the cinematography in that movie is just quite frankly gorgeous. But there's something about the sort of handheld almost, I don't even know if it's like wide angle lens, but they look less traditional. A lot of them are using like handheld cameras, like less refined in a way, but it feels more intimate and I do prefer the visual style and I do think it fits the stories that he is telling better um, it just in every way that visual style that he uses in these 2010s films works better for me and I just absolutely love them there are some of like all three of them are some of my favorite films visually of all time and I think that's largely in part to the sort of a approach that he took to these movies, visually speaking. And another one of the really big ones that I do want to talk about that I think potentially is the most important bit is the uh, sort of story, not like the story stories, but what they tackle, the themes they tackle. They are much more profound stories, in my opinion. So days of heaven and badlands 
both pretty cool concepts for a movie very well written well done in general but they were kind of just they're just movies they're movies that have a cool story and they're well made that's great i like those movies they're good but uh you know tree of life song to song knight of cups all have a good story but they're so much more than just a story and a film they have characters that are going through stuff and they're very at least to me very personal uh, i think a lot of what i said about the visual style i think that's a lot of the reason why a lot of these films are very split so specifically on letterboxd a lot of these have lower scores because a lot of people don't love the visuals don't love the you know approach that he takes with his filmmaking in telling these stories but for someone like me they resonated with me a lot i think the story is really really well done and there's always one character or a bunch of characters in these films that are going through something it's you know they're figuring out their purpose in life they're figuring out how to find their true love how to find people who actually care about them like real stuff that people go through that i have gone through and am still going through and watching these movies it really strikes a chord with me it really hits me deep down because i know the what these characters are feeling and in a way even if I have never been through what they're going through, I could in the future. And the way that Terrence Malick tells the story through his filmmaking makes it like I am going through it with them. It makes it a very cathartic experience, but also pretty like depressing and dark at times. And he's not afraid to really get like down and dirty and get into the absolute like rock bottom of how these characters are and like the lowest point of these people in order to get that relief at the end of the story sometimes not and sometimes that's the best way to end it is that they are on their way but maybe they haven't found it yet and that's enough for you to feel like maybe if you're going through the same thing that's all you need to do you just need to take that one step that one step into, you know, making new friends and finding the people that love you truly and not are not just there for whatever, you know, they love you for who you truly are. I don't know. It's stuff like this that makes me, you know, movies like this that are definitely not for everyone. But for me, they specifically strike a chord with me and they make me think about like my life and the events that have happened or are going to happen in my life and it just really like it, this is what i think filmmaking is all about it's making these films and stories that are incredibly important stories to tell for people and making them in a way that is visually stunning to look at has great like sound so they're for all of the senses they capture all of your senses and it's just a really immersive experience that is really really interesting to watch something i said in my song to song review was he really makes a story that doesn't feel constructed and that it almost just falls into place which to me is kind of like normal life like normal life isn't a script that you've written out and it's going to go like this and it's gonna you're gonna say this and specifically i think in song to song is a film that really it hit with me because i think in the way that the cinematography and the editing is kind of choppy and back and forth and whatever all this sort of stuff is almost a representation of life itself because life is not always so set in stone it kind of just stuff just happens you got to react to it like these characters react to it you got to just go through the motions do your thing and that's sort of just a thing that i've picked up on it that i think i thought was really really cool and again they just capture real emotions they capture love betrayal friendship uh depression happiness anxiety like everything they kind of just get all over it tree of life is a way of capturing childhood and like a troubled childhood translates into adult life and how um maybe troubled children become adults who don't know what their purpose is and they need to find 
whether they believe in like religion or faith and what happens after you die like is it truly worth it like what is the purpose of life what is going to happen after life and it's just all stuff that to me i think about all the time and to see a film that conveys these exact same thoughts that i've had forever is just really really interesting and cool to see and yeah these like above all else they just evoke emotion in me like nothing else um song to song gives me hope that eventually if i love i will find ones who love me back just as much and tree of life gives me hope that you know after life after we live a hopefully fulfilling life that something will make of that and then it's not just over completely and knight of cups despite the overall depressing tone of it kind of shows you almost the way not to live even if you are a for example a successful screenwriter in hollywood living your life in the excess uh just numbs the pain or depression that you might have and that is not a way to overcome it you have to take your steps in the right direction like rick does in this film getting into relationships one at a time with friends and even like partners there are things to learn from these experiences people to meet that you will care for in your later life these are like true life lessons just being taught in like a less than two hour span sometimes that is just so incredible and i think terence malick is just honestly a genius he is incredibly talented and yeah these three films specifically are three of my all-time favorites now i love all three of them and yeah i know i'm re repeating myself but visually auditorily i guess i don't know if that's a word but they basically are almost a sensory overload but they're treading that line to where everything is just very very like immersive and just in your face but not quite to the point where it's overwhelming and then most of all they just evoke emotion in you and teach you life lessons that i've almost never seen in any other film ever and he's already done it three times consecutively so i just think he's incredibly incredibly talented and while I do like his earlier films, these ones are just so profound and so potent and emotional that I think it is very, very hard to top them.